We've already discussed the paralleling technique with the full mouth series of radiographs, and now we're going to discuss the bisecting technique. As stated earlier, the paralleling technique is the preferred method, but it's not always possible to gain parallelism between the film and the tooth, depending on the unique characteristics of each patient. Patients who have uh, a shallow palate or crowded teeth or just a very small arch will require some sort of alteration to your technique. So your next choice is the bisecting, and the film holder of choice is your snap array for the bisecting technique. And first we're gonna go through where you would position the film on the teeth for each of these exposures, and then we'll go through the PID placement. If you're using the snap array, you won't have an aiming device like the RIN, so this is where your vertical angulation will come into play. So I have my snap array assembled to start with anterior films, and I've marked a little line at the approximate center of this film, and the center of the film is what will be lined up with each appropriate landmark. So starting with the anterior teeth, the first shot would be the central incisors, so we're going to line up the middle of the film at the midline to get both the central incisors. And we're gonna try and get the film as close to the lingual surface as possible. So the film would be approximately like this. Now remember with the snap array on all the anterior teeth, the patient will actually have to hold the bottom of the film holder. It won't stay in place on its own. So this would be for the maxillary centrals. And then moving over to the maxillary lateral, we would line up the center of the film where I've marked with the middle of the lateral incisor. The placement would be exactly the same again. And then for the canine, we would simply line it up with the middle of the canine. And the patient would bite down in exactly the same manner and hold on to the film. For your posterior exposures, on the maxillary, you would have your premolar and molar exposures. And you would line up the center of the film on the second premolar and have the patient bite down. And then for the maxillary molar, you would line up the center of the film with the second molar and have the patient bite down. Now, remember the snap array, um, you cannot take bite wings with that. So you would have to utilize either a bite wing tab or a bite wing loop like we discussed in the previous video. Moving down to the mandibular arch, the landmarks that we're looking for are the same as the maxillary posterior. We're looking for the second premolar and the second molar to line up the center of the film. So when positioning the mandibular premolar periapical, we're going to line up the center of the film where I have the black mark with the second premolar. Then we would place it like so and have the patient bite down. For the molar shot, we are going to line up the center of the film where I've marked with approximately the second molar and then place the film and have the patient bite down. For the mandibular anteriors, remember you're going to get the centrals and laterals all on one radiograph. So we're going to line up the center of the film where I've marked here at the approximate midline in order to get both centrals and laterals on one film. Then we would lay the film in the patient's mouth like so, as close to the lingual surface as possible, and have them close down. And then to do the canines on the mandible, we would simply move our line over and have it positioned at the middle of the canine and then have the patient bite down like so and that would be all of our mandibular anterior shots. To demonstrate PID placement using the bisecting technique, the first thing um, again that you want to make sure is that your patient is positioned correctly. So when we're starting on the maxillary arch, we need to make sure that his maxillary occlusal plane is parallel to the floor, which his is. And for all of the maxillary projections, we're basically going to be traveling right here along the ala tragus line. So starting with the maxillary central incisors, we're going to use a positive 50 degree angle and we're going to line up the PID approximately with the bottom right around the nostrils. And again, it's going to depend on your film placement. You want to make sure that the circle of the PID covers the film to avoid cone cut. 
Moving on to the maxillary lateral incisor radiograph, we're going to keep the same positive 50 degree angulation, only this time we're just going to slightly move the PID over so that it's even approximately with the lateral side of the nostril. Then to go on to the canine exposure, again we're going to use the same positive degree angulation and just continue rotating around that a la tragus line so that it's even further out from the nostril. Again on all of these you want to make sure that the circle of the PID is covering your film based on your placement. And then whenever we move back to the maxillary premolar exposure, we're going to change our angulation just slightly to approximately 40 degrees. And we're going to center our PID around the anterior portion of the cheekbone. So this will differ depending on your patient's anatomical landmarks. And for the maxillary molar exposure, we're simply going to rotate it around to the back of the cheekbone the zygomatic arch. And we're going to decrease our angle just slightly to approximately 30 degrees. And that is all the PID positioning for the maxillary arch. When lining up your PID for your premolar and molar bite wing projections, one thing you have to keep in mind is that you're taking the bite wing to uh, diagnose interproximal decay. So what you're shooting for is for that central ray to go directly through the contacts or interproximal spaces of the premolar and then the molar. So you're going to set your vertical angulation at approximately positive 10 degrees and you're going to, paying attention to how you place the film, line up the circle of the PID on the patient's face and you're going to have it at about the midline here. That way we're getting a picture of the maxillary and mandibular teeth in occlusion. And for the molar bite wing, you're going to direct the central ray at 90 degrees through the contacts of the molar. So this would be your example. Then to do the premolar bite wing, we're simply going to move the PID forward and direct that central ray through the contacts of the premolar. And you'll notice that this looks a little bit funny because it's not curved towards the patient's face especially on bite wings is when your horizontal angulation comes into play. So if we are directing that central ray through the contacts, we wouldn't want to have our horizontal angulation coming in like this because the result would be overlap. And the same applies um, on our mandibular periapical projections. For the mandibular molar radiograph, we're going to use a vertical angulation of approximately negative 15 degrees and we're going to bring the circle of the PID in approximately even with the mandible. So this will be shooting up through the root projecting onto the film. And we're aiming for the second molar. Then moving anterior for the um, premolar periapical, we're going to use approximately a negative five vertical angulation and simply bring the PID forward. Again, notice my horizontal angulation as I moved around the mandible and how it's flush with the film in the mandible. And for our anterior projections, we're going to use approximately negative 20. And our landmark of choice here is the chin. So for the, all of your uh, incisors, we're going to come up approximately through the chin. And for each canine, we would just simply rotate it to the right or left just a little bit, shooting for going through the canine. So those are all of your vertical angulations and PID placements for the bisecting technique. Another common type of bisecting technique is the occlusal projection. Uh, we use this in the dental office a lot for children to look at their development. And the concept of the occlusal projection uses the same type of angulation, but this time we're only going to use two films. So I have an example in my hand of a number four size film. And we'll start off with the maxillary occlusal projection. So I'm going to place this film in the patient's mouth vertically with the white side facing up or towards me to radiograph the maxillary arch. We're going to place this 
as far in the mouth as we can without making the patient uncomfortable and have them close down close to the edge of the film so that we still radiograph the incisal edges of the laterals and centrals. And then our vertical angulation, depending on the patient's anatomy, is going to be um, as much at a right angle as possible. So if you can imagine that you're shooting the top of that film, we're going to come in like so. It's going to be circled right around the nostrils through the top of the forehead and eyebrow. So this would be an example of your angulation for the maxillary occlusal projection. For the mandibular occlusal, again, we want the front of the film to be facing the source of radiation. So we're going to place the white side of the film away from us and on top of the mandibular arch and insert it in the same way so that we're covering the entire arch, including the incisors. And the angulation for um, the mandibular occlusal is going to be as straight through the chin as possible. So again, depending on the patient, your angulations are going to vary. But the ideal is to have the PID coming in like this. So notice how it is hitting the film perpendicular to the plane that's developed. Now, focusing on unique characteristics of each patient, um, depending on your patient's size, you may have to use a different size of film. A lot of uh, smaller children, five and six year olds, you would have to use a number two size film and that would be placed horizontally. You could also use this same size of film, the number four, um, and place it horizontally depending on what the patient's needs for that projection are. So remember on your bisecting technique and with your occlusal technique that your vertical angulation is extremely important. And just to summarize, all of your maxillary projections will have a positive angulation, which looks like so. And all of your mandibular projections will have a negative angulation with the PID pointing up at the face and then your bite wing projection should be neutral at about positive 10, coming straight through the contacts. And that is the bisecting technique.